And now joining me in the studio is Plus TV Africa correspondent Amaka Okoye. Thank you for joining us, Amaka. Good to be here. With now, you today. were out there, I mean, this morning, and you want to bring us up to speed to the reality that's on ground. Okay, so um, first of all, it's yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's day eight of the lockdown. The truth of the matter is that the people in Ajegule, uh, they have no idea what you're talking about when we say lockdown. Um, I mean, we can't capture everything uh, in that report. Um, but basically what I saw, I saw people who are just going about, you know, doing their businesses, you know, moving around, talking together in clusters. When they saw the cameras, they all surrounded us, you know. It's just business as usual. There's nothing, there's no such thing as lockdown, there's no such thing as social or physical distancing, you know, it's completely impossible because, as you know, um, Ajegula is densely populated. So when you're asking people to um, uh, uh, practice the physical distancing, and you have, like Oge said in that report, about 16 tenants living together. So even the, the compound alone, it's, it's a crowd. Uh, so it makes it completely impossible to uh, practice such thing. Uh, but the major issue for me that I saw yesterday is um, not the lockdown, not the COVID-19, but the reality, uh, the hardship and the hunger that is there. You know, there's a woman that walked up to us. You, you do know how risky it is to film in Ajegunle. But when you see people coming on their own and say, oh, I want to talk. I don't know where you're coming from, whether you're government or whoever you are. I want to talk. You know, there's no food. They're asking us to stay here. There's no food. There's no provision. Nothing is done. No light. How do you want us to cope? And for me, uh, looking at hearing them, I'm just worried that I hope that this is not going to escalate into some sort of uh, uprising, for lack of a better word, you know, because um, they say to us, if we don't see food, we're going to start breaking things and we're going to loot anything that we see. And that's not justifying it, but it tells you where they are as a people. Yeah, it's just that it's an uprising. I mean, people mm -hmm. will definitely revolt when mm -hmm. um, they can't reach f for basic necessities any mm -hmm. longer. I mean, now this is, I'm not even going to ask you about the level of compliance because there's absolutely none there so far from um, the, the report I mm -hmm. saw. But what is the level of awareness of COVID-19 to Wait, these people? Uh, good question, uh, Beniak. I would say some people are aware, you know, Ajegula is a mix up of all kinds of everybody. Uh, you know, there are those who are quite literate, even though they are in Ajegula, and there are those who are, you know, not literate. Um, but the bulk of it, majority of them do not agree that there is any such thing as COVID-19. In fact, someone told us on camera, who told you, no, when they saw us, they said, oh, no, 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 if it's that disease, it's, you know, even here, it's not here at all, you know. And even Oge mentioned to us, you know, on camera that, yes, there are people who don't agree that COVID-19 is real. So even when you tell them about washing hands and you tell them about every other safety measures, they just don't believe that it is true. And that is worrisome because Let's pray that COVID-19 doesn't find its way there. That is, if it's not already there, because as you do know, we yeah, don't have... You say you have a compound where you have 16 people living in one compound. 16 people living together, sharing bathrooms, sharing toilets, sharing kitchen, sharing all, everything, you know, the space together. Uh, so we just pray that COVID-19 doesn't find its way in there, because if it does, we'll be this country, I mean, Lagos State will be in trouble. You know. Now, for me, it feels um, the, the general perception and feeling in that place is not so much about the, the pandemic, COVID-19. No. It's, it's a harsh reality of hunger, poverty. Yes. And what's to, from your findings and report, what do you think the federal government or the state government mm -hmm. I mean, should be looking at and addressing in such places? Knowing that um, that is just one, one place in, mm -hmm. in, in the state, there are mm -hmm. a whole lot of other places right. in like similar situation. Mm -hmm. What should the government be looking at doing right now? So you know that we, we do also know that the, the state government uh, had some palliatives. This is the time where they should send those things to the right places and to the right people. Because what this report revealed is the fact that, you know, the people who really need these food items, the so-called 2,000 or 5,000 naira that was sent to accounts, they've not gotten it. But does that solve the problem of that place? It, it doesn't solve the yes. problem of that place, right? It, it would not complete because the problem is complex. Yes. But what we have at hand, you know, you know the way we say that a hungry man is an angry man. You might as well give him food 
to listen to you, to hear oh, the need, to see the reason why he shouldn't go out. Mm. Because the danger is, if he is hungry and you're telling him about COVID-19, he doesn't care. And if he's got COVID-19, he's going to spread it to so many others. So what do you do? The lesser evil is to provide what they need now. And let me tell you, the truth of the matter is that the people in Ajegula need food. You know, uh, the, the, the report that we saw there is the girl who, it's, she's not in any NGO. She's just one girl who feels that, you know, look, people need food here. The, the issues here is the real thing for them is food. They are hungry. So she's done that before she said, she, you know, cooked and gave food to adults. And then she shared masks, face masks. Because one face mask is 300. And you're asking someone who's not eating to go buy and wear face mask. That's really ridiculous. You know, so she did that for adults. And then yesterday, she fed 100 children. And you can even see adults struggling to get the same food you know, that she's made for children. So it shows you that hunger is real. So the federal government, the state government need to pay attention. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how the state is going, the strategy to use. But they need to figure out uh, and be sure that the palliatives are getting to the real people who are in need of it. Amakoko, thank you for joining us and for that beautiful report. Thank you, Ben Young.